Yan Ziqing, a famous Go player of the Three Kingdom era, can be regarded as the ancestor of Ground Boost Go players. When Ziqing was a child, he was poor and lacked food and clothing. Sometimes, when Ziqing couldn't stand being hungry, he would go on the street to beg for food. One day, Ziqing went on the street and saw a person selling sashimi cakes. He couldn't help but walk over. His eyes were fixed on the cakes, but he said nothing. He then looked up at the vendor. Although his clothes were very old and patched, his eyes were bright. The vendor who sold cakes pitied Ziqing, gave him some to eat, and asked him about his situation at home. When he learned that his father was lying ill in bed, his mother helped the family by doing laundry and housework. He kindly introduced him to an old man living alone, and let him learn skills of making a living with the old man. When Ziqing saw the old man, he knocked his head on the ground three times politely, and didn't talk much. The vendor introduced his family situation to the old man, and the old man accepted Ziqing readily. The old man made a living by selling groceries and learned to play golf. When he became old, he could no longer walk, so he opened a golf stand. In addition to selling drinks and small daily necessities, he would play golf with his customers. Ziqing helped him to serve tea and pour water for his customers, which helped him a lot. The old man liked Ziqing very much. The old man then found out Ziqing liked the game of Go because whenever the customers played Go, he came to stand nearby and looked intently. So the old man started to teach Ziqing to play Go when they came back home. Unexpectedly, the old man lost to Ziqing. The old man thought that Ziqing must be a Go genius. Afterwards, when a Go player came to play, the old man introduced Ziqing to the guests and asked Ziqing to play Go with them. Ziqing barely lost and gradually became famous. After practical training, Ziqing's Go skills were getting better and better. Some government officials liked to play Go and often invited Ziqing to play Go with them, which also helped him earn some extra money. At that time, a rich man liked to play Go and often invited Ziqing to play chess at his house. In addition to giving him silver, he always hoped that Ziqing could stay in his house. Ziqing was worried about the old man, so he always declined the offer and returned to the old man's house to accompany him every night. The old man's health was getting worse, and he had asthma. Ziqing was very patient and attentively checked on his condition every day. One day, the old man took out the book from under his box, let Ziqing sit in front of him, and said, I am very old, and I have nothing to leave you. This is a book my master gave me when I was very young. It is said to be the ancestral Go book. I wasn't smart enough to understand it. Now I will give it to you. I hope you can do your best to study and improve your skills of Go. Since then, Ziqing devoted himself to study all day and find it was indeed a wonderful book. He learned novel layouts, tweaks to fix moves, unique tesuji, and endgame techniques from the book. After that, Ziqing's Go skills improved greatly and soon became the top chess master of the world. In Guangbo Wuzhi, Ziqing was regarded as the Go sage. At the time, people called Go game of Yan Ziqing, calligraphy of Huang Xiang, Zhang Zibing, Chen Liangfu, paintings of Cao Huxing, of Naromacy of Song Shou, physiognomy of Zheng Yu, fortune telling of Fan Chen Da, collectively as Wu Zhong Ba Jue. It can be seen how great his accomplishments in Go were. Thank you for watching. If you want to see similar contents, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.